Hey everybody, Christopher Odd here. Welcome to chapter four of my walkthrough for the bridge. Now, you will notice that uh, you only see doors one, two, and three here, but we do have this new uh, switch that we can go behind, and what that does is actually let us get to number four here. So I wanted to show you that just in case the off chance somebody might be stuck there and super frustrated. So let's go into chapter four. I'll show you every single one in here. This is where things, I know I said last time things are getting nutty, but like now things are getting really incredibly difficult. The first couple ones in here aren't that bad, but you'll see. So this is chapter four, part one, called The Veil. And basically what the veil is, <laughs> it's like a shower curtain, is what it looks like. And maybe because there's all these pipes around it, that gives me that impression, but you see that shower curtain over on the left there? Well, what happens is you go in there, and then you can manipulate gravity. So, I guess it's probably easier to just show you what happens. So, first of all, look at that key up top there. You see how it's moving? It's got its own gravity. You want to use the right bumper until it falls into that nook, okay? Otherwise, if you were to rotate, it's just going to come flying off. So now you want to use your left bumper to go into the little shower curtain called the veil. And you'll see... I don't know if you could see that. Let me do it again. If you pay close attention, you can see a little ghost come out of my body and go towards the key. You see that? It's hard to see because everything is spinning. But what that means is that when you're in this veil, you're manipulating, manipulating the gravity for the object that your ghost goes to. And oftentimes it has that weird little black and uh, gray pattern flowing through it, just kind of like it looks behind the veil as well. So you can see the pattern on the key, you can see the pattern on the veil, and once you're in here, you basically just want to hold the right bumper, see how we're manipulating the gravity of the key there? Hold it until it falls down onto this bottom section, and then left bumper to just bring it back into the middle, you come out and you can grab it. There you go. So you gotta be careful, if you, if you hold it too much, uh, the key can go flying off the edge. But other than that, that one's pretty simple. So this is chapter four, part two, called The Rook. You'll see a nice little uh, chessboard here. Cool little perspective trick. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold down the right bumper, being careful to stay as far away from this ball as possible. And we're gonna go all the way around there we go. So now the ball is by the door. And we're going to go into the veil, a.k.a. the shower curtain, okay? So, basically now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the ball has the opposite gravity of us so that we can go to the door and the ball would be above us at that point, right? That would be the, the way to do it safely. So, we're going to rotate this. You'll see the ball start to fall. And anything, it can go in the veil, doesn't matter. It only, I'm the only thing that can control the veil, so. Once we see that we uh, are opposite of the ball, then we can basically just walk to the door. Just rotating our way there. And there we go. So this is chapter four, part three called The Bend. Now, a couple of key things to mention here, and you saw the camera zoom in on our way in, so if you look at the light in the bottom right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of rotate a bit. You see how it, it changes with my perspective? So, you see my character, our little buddy there? Wherever that goes, wherever I go, that gravity follows the same way. So, that's kind of our, our normalization point, is that white, that white lamp hanging from the chain in the bottom right. Now, you'll notice that the other lamps are that weird kind of changing pattern again. And you'll see that the menace ball in the bottom right has that same pattern. So we know that those are indicating the gravity of that menace ball. The other two menace balls that you see in the middle are actually just decoys. They don't even move. Uh, all that's basically doing is prohibiting you from walking there. So, uh, 
just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now, the easiest way to explain how to solve this is if I move to this door, okay? Look at the lamp on the bottom. You can see that it's heading straight down because that's where I'm standing. But what we really want is we want to have those other lamps doing the opposite of what that bottom lamp is doing, right? So how would we do that? Well, we got to walk over to the veil. You'll notice the button there, which obviously only that menace ball can get to. And we're going to rotate this until that ball falls into the into the uh, lock there. And then we want to make sure that our lamps are actually lining up pretty much opposite to the other lamp. So like this. And I know it doesn't make sense right now, but once I come out of this, you're going to see that that ball is going to fall back onto the button. So as I walk to the right, which is actually looking left here, but you still hold right because the perspective, you got to remember, you're basically looking at the same perspective all the time, it's just upside down. It's a little bit crazy, I know. There we go, we're gonna rotate. You'll see that the ball will then go into the button. Hopefully unlock the door. Very close, there we go. So this is chapter four, part four, called The Triad. And this one's pretty crazy. These next three actually took me quite a long time to figure out. Okay, so the first couple things you're gonna notice here is that we've got a white door and we got a dark key. So that means you have to be dark to get the key, light to get the door. The other thing you're gonna notice is the two menace balls uh, can be impacted by the veil. So first things first, we're gonna rotate to the right and we're gonna flip. Now we're on the same side as the door. You'll notice we every time you flip, you switch colors, right? So we obviously can't get that key. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip again. And we're gonna go into the veil. Now, what we wanna do is we actually wanna get it so that this ball that's in the same little area as we are is away from us. And we also want that ball on the left, the, the other menace ball, to be on the ceiling from when we would flip into that section. So right there where it is right now is perfect. I can come out of this veil and I'm gonna run down and flip really quick so that that ball from above does not get me. Okay, there you go. So you'll notice now that that ball is opposite of us, which is exactly what we want. So now we can basically just walk over to the key. And once we flip, we're gonna be dark again, so that's a good sign. Grab the key. Boom, boom. Okay. Now, originally when I was trying to play this, I would always wanna go backwards here. Uh, I don't, I don't, I just figured if I went backwards, retrace my steps, then it would be easier. But the problem is, is you can't control the gravity at that point until you get to this, uh, so you get two cubes away or two sections away. So if we go here and we flip again, then we've got control of the, of the veil again. And we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. Rotate to the left. Wait till that ball falls and it's going to be on the ceiling of when we would flip. I hope that makes sense. So you notice it's on the ground now, in the bottom there, but when we flip it'll be on the ceiling. That's kind of the way I can describe it. There we go. Rotate that ball out of the way, holding left bumper, or left trigger, either or. And then we're white, or light, and go through the door. So this is chapter four, part five, called The Intersection. Okay, so the first things you're going to notice here is that we have these two plants at the top with the weird pattern going across them, and those are the indicators of the Menace Ball's gravity. So same thing as the lanterns from earlier, but just plants this time. 
And that also means that we can control, you'll notice the pattern on the Manus Ball, we can control his gravity using the veil that he's sitting right beside. So first thing we want to do is we want to rotate. Notice how the ball follows the direction of those plants are pointing. So we're going to rotate until we're on this bottom button here. You also notice that it's a plant on the right, and that's just kind of our normalization plant that shows us where our center of gravity is. Now the next thing we want to do is rotate to the right until we fall down by the door ever so slightly, and we're going to keep rotating to the right until the menace ball goes into the gravity hole and we fall down to that button again. Now you want to do this part really kind of slowly because if you go too fast, the menace ball can miss or it can go right through the swirl. So there we go. Next thing we're going to do is go onto the button. It's going to fall down there. We're basically just going to trade spots with it. We're going to keep rotating until I fall into the swirl. There we go. And keep rotating until the menace ball hits the button for us and we're on the platform. Now the next thing we want to do, we actually want to fall off of the platform. And we're going to rotate to the right. Menace ball is going to go to the door and I'm going to end up falling down to that other button. There we go. I'm going to keep rotating now so I can go to the veil. Now the key here is you got to be thinking about your end game, okay? We know that we need that menace ball on the button with the key. So we're going to rotate until those plants are pointing downwards toward the key to indicate that that's where the gravity would go. Does that make sense? So take a look at that. That's where you should be set up before you leave the veil. Does that make sense? Okay. Now we're going to rotate again. The ball is going to go down to that other button. And we're basically just kind of repeating the same thing. I'm going to fall into the section with the door. Oh, back that up a bit. Got to make sure that he's on that button. There we go. And then keep rotating. We're going to keep holding to the right. He's going to go into the swirl. I'm going to go hit that button again. You'll notice he's now out of there. And when I rotate all the way around... got to be a little bit careful. There we go. So it's kind of touch and go to balance out how the ball is going to progress, but that's the gist of it. Hope that helped. Now this is chapter four, part six, called The Archway. Okay, so this is the last part of the fourth chapter, and I gotta say, this puzzle took me at least an hour to figure out on my own, and probably another hour to refine it so I knew exactly how to do it and what the tricks were. And so hopefully this helps you guys, because it took a lot of work to make it happen, and I hope you guys don't get stuck. So, first thing I'm gonna show you is that that midsection there has the pattern on it, which means that's the pattern we can control with the veil. And you'll, you'll also notice that the ball is just dark gray. And the ball actually just takes on the gravity of whatever surface it's touching. So right now it's flat, it's not going to move. But if it's on that little uh, dented section in the middle, it's going to kind of roll up and down the side. So you'll see that in a second. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate to the left. Until we get to our first little flip switch. Then we're going to flip our little guy. And we're going to start walking to the right all the way around till we get to the veil. You don't actually have to rotate the map or anything here. You just hold to the right. And you will eventually get to the veil. Now you'll notice the whole point here is to get the ball. The menace ball there. 
up to where that button is with the key underneath it, okay? So right now I'd say it's in the bottom left quadrant if we were to look at this as a square. We're gonna move it from the bottom left to the bottom right to the top right to the top left. So how we do that, first of all, we gotta get it on the other side of that panel. So let's rotate to the right. Once that happens, we're gonna try to catch the ball on the bottom of that panel by rotating to the left when it's in basically the lowest position it can be in this back and forth thing it's doing. So as soon as it goes down on this one, I'm gonna start rotating. And there we go. We've now got it on the other side, okay? Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna to rotate to the right. Don't even move out of the veil yet. Rotate to the right until the point just before that midsection starts to fall. So keep tapping. There we go. And just hold your back button until you're into position. So right there, it's not moving. Now, I'm gonna actually walk to the other side of the veil, and then I'm going to make sure that we keep that ball in that same position. See how I didn't do it fast enough there, and the ball is now on the other side? We don't want that. So we're gonna back up. It's gonna take you a few times probably, but the key is really to just start walking, rotating, and then once you're in the veil, keep holding to the right. And I think that may actually do it. That may actually be okay. So from this pers perspective here, we're now upside down. And if we walk out, we're gonna be able to use that middle platform as a ledge. Perfect, so now the ball starts to fall. And we're just going to basically hold to the right until the ball ends up in the section with the button at the top. Keep going. There you go. Now hold to the left. Perfect. Okay. So here we are. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip. We're going to walk to the right and go all the way around again until we get to the veil. And you'll notice now that, that ball is gonna stay in that top uh, quadrant there with the button. There we go. We're gonna go to the veil. And we're gonna flip around. We're gonna do the same thing where we trap that ball underneath. Or I guess in this situation, it's gonna be on top of that midsection. So here we go. And trapped. Very good. Now we're gonna walk to the other veil again. Basically doing the exact same thing that we did. There we go. We can walk out. And we're just gonna walk back down onto the platform. Rotate this again. The reason you have to do this is because you need to be a certain color once you get to the door, right? So you basically just have to retrace your steps. So here we go, flipping again. Now we're gonna walk to the right, and you'll see that this is gonna put us in the position we need to be in to get to the door. And the right color, of course, because that's pretty important. I think where most people get confused is having to do things once or twice over in this game, uh, because you have to make sure that you're the right color, so. Now that we're here, the door is unlocked. And that's how you complete chapter four. I'll show you guys what the little monument says here. This world seems to pulse now in his absence, sending chills down my spine. Now, there is something else, something sinister. This morning I woke up to find it at the foot of my bed, waiting, staring. I wonder what that is, man. The next couple parts are very exciting. Can't wait to show them to you guys. Hope this helped you. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the bridge. Man, I absolutely love this game. I think it's super innovative. And I've never played anything quite like it. It's really, really cool. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you next time.